At this time, I'd like to introduce Anthony St. Martin, who is a journalist who's reported from the Middle East, from the Balkans, from Cuba, from elsewhere. He's also a writer, producer, uh, writer of screenplays. Uh, please join me in giving a warm welcome to Anthony St. Martin. out here. But these are um, these are the soul of a movement, a campaign to accomplish an impeachment. As John just said, we just talked about why impeachment has to happen. Everyone's still here. I assume that everyone agrees that we need to oppose this administration and get rid of the president and the vice president. Am I correct in that? Yeah. Okay, so the question is how do we do it? Uh, the first question I would say, however, is why are they still in office? How is that possible? Well, I want to relate to you some of the things that have uh, happened in my five trips to uh, Congress for the last four months. Uh, I went there three times in order to prep Congress and let them know that I was going to be coming with thousands of petition signatures and thousands of pledges to, in, to strike if they refused our petition. And I went and I ran into uh, uh, Representative John Connors. And I told him. I told him in a sheet of paper I had given to his assistant. And when I ran into him in the hallway, he didn't see that sheet of paper, so he knew what I was about. And he said, well, this is you? I said, yeah, that's me. Said, this is you? Yeah. He says, well, you know, the problem with impeachment is that people have to want it. Now, this was in 2007. Okay? I mean, how, how, what does it take for this man to know that we out here are against this administration? We've had polls. We've had uh, petitions, we've had demonstrations, we've had uh, phone calls by the millions. He knows we want it. So what's stopping him? Same question. Why is this administration still in office? What has a grip on our Congress that is so tight and so threatening that they would stand up to the will of the American people like they do? And why is Pelosi doing what she did? Why would John Conyers, who convened a panel of 30 experts back in 2003 to put together an iron tight case against this president and this administration, and then totally reverse and not enforce it? That's what got me started. When I looked up and saw the charges that these guys were able to put together, targeting a foreign leader for assassination, and we all sat there and watched it on television. We have good intelligence saying that Saddam Hussein is right here, kaboom. That's against the law. That's grounds for impeachment. And we have millions and millions and millions of witnesses around the world who saw it. Why do we need investigation? Yeah, everybody saw it. We need an investigation. And besides, impeachment, is, is, at this point, becomes a matter of public opinion. So again, why aren't they impeaching? Well, I have a theory, and I'll share it with you. I believe that Congress breaks down to three spheres of influence. And in the inner circle, you have a portion of Congress. They're with the program, they've been with the program for years, they're benefiting from the program, the agenda, this global agenda that's happening, and they serve it every day. <coughs> Outside of them, you have the wannabes. Okay? They're the ones, they haven't been there, but they want to be. Okay? Because they know that's where the power is at, they can tell that's where it's at, they can see that these guys have, have, have succeeded, that 9-11 succeeded, that getting Bush elected succeeded, that having Clinton as a liner for eight years succeeded, and they want to be what the power is at the end of the day. And they want to be, and that takes up most of Congress. Now you have the outer circle here who is a never gonna be. Okay? Congressional Black Caucus is about every single one of them. They have a long history, as does Mr. Conyers, in civil rights, working for the working man, for the common man, and they don't want any part of these people, and these people know it, that they'll never be in the inner circle. They're isolated, they're intimidated, and I have to say at this point, they're totally useless to us. They will not stand up to the threat of uh, violence to themselves, or violence to their careers, or loss of office. So there we have it, all of Congress. <laughs> That's why this administration is still in office. So I refer you now to two amendments to the Constitution. First Amendment says we have the right to petition. Any one of us takes a petition to Congress. Congress must look at that petition, represent that petition, take it to the floor and say, this citizen here has a problem, especially if it's a problem with an elected official. 
especially if it's a grievance for redress of injuries as a result of the actions of a public official. That's why that's what our petition says. We want redress for the injuries suffered by the American people as a result of the actions by President Bush and Vice President Dick Cheney. In the Constitution, these representatives must represent that petition and refuse to. So, where the hell was it? I'm sorry. I was going to this. Right, the petition, the second, the second thing. Yes. Thank you, Mark. The second thing I'm. Oh, thank you very much. I appreciate that. See if we can work together. <laughs> right? Okay, that's the First Amendment. It gives us the right to do that. Then there's the Tenth Amendment, which says that powers are given to the executive, excuse me, to the, to the federal government. And those, uh, those powers are not unlimited. Then there are powers that are given to the state. Those that are not given to the federal are given to the states. And those not given to the state are given to the people. And these guys knew that this would happen. They knew that the, that the federal government could become corrupted. They knew that the state governments become, could become ineffective. So they put, the end of it, the end of the line, it's us. And that's where we're at. It's pretty simple. We're not done. We're just called upon. 